COVID surge in the tri-state area because things are really changing quickly. I'm Natalie Pascrell. I'm David Ushry. A lot of headlines coming at you. We're going to sort through them for you. Let's start in New York City. Mayor de Blasio just laid out a new plan to slow the spread. It includes more testing capacity and a new campaign now to promote booster shots. The city will also give out half a million free rapid tests and a million free face masks. Now, this comes as we get a new snapshot of the surge in the city. The numbers certainly going in the wrong direction. The positivity rate doubled in just three days. And that's something a city health advisor says we've not seen before. On Broadway, more shows have been canceled because of breakthrough cases. Hamilton had to call off both tonight and tomorrow night's performances. And Tina just canceled tonight's show for the second straight day. We have live team coverage for you this afternoon. Let's start with News Force Andrew Siff joining us live from Murray Hill. Andrew. Natalie, David, this is the reality right now outside of urgent care centers like this one. Long lines, we're talking dozens of people outside, at least the weather is warm. Hours long wait to get a COVID test. The mayor promised today it will soon get better. Lines down the block in neighborhoods across the city. Nearly three hours now. New Yorkers waiting for COVID tests amid a spike in cases that has health officials alarmed. A senior medical advisor to City Hall tweeting today, um, we've never seen this before in NYC. Test positivity doubling in three days. We're going to be increasing testing capacity. Mayor de Blasio said more test sites should shorten the lines. The city also ordering half a million rapid home tests to be free of charge. But as new cases spread fast, the city also promising to step up enforcement of indoor mask mandates. We'll have inspectors going out full force uh, starting as early as tomorrow. Just for the record, everyone here is vaxxed. Everyone here is boosted. Meanwhile, in Albany, Governor Hochul today, for the first time, said boosters may soon be required if you want to be considered eligible for indoor events or even certain jobs. And at some point, we may have to determine that Fully vaccinated means boosted as well, and we'll give people the sufficient time frame to make that happen, but I'm just sending out the message now, prepare for that. They've already announced that step at the Metropolitan Opera. Mother, Despite protocols like mandatory vaccination, blocking off seats in the front rows to protect the orchestra, and most singers wearing masks in rehearsal, the Met requiring boosters for cast, crew, and audience starting January 17th. This is not a time for half measures with the infection rate rising. Are you concerned that we may ultimately have to have some kind of pause if case numbers get too high? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's, a, that's the fear that is on the mind of every producer, every restaurant owner. Um, you know, this is what we, we don't want to go through what we went through before. Back live, another look at the long lines for COVID tests here. Keep in mind, this is a week before Christmas Eve, so a lot of these folks want to get that negative test before they see people for the holidays. And then there's New Year's Eve in Times Square. Mayor de Blasio asked about that today. He said that event is still on as planned for now, but he did say the health department is assessing it based on the numbers every day. We're live in Murray Hill. Andrew Siff, News 4 New York. All right, Andrew, thanks so much. So much to cover today. We appreciate it. Let's go to New Jersey now. We're seeing the biggest surge in COVID cases since last winter there. Now, the state reported more than 6,000 positive tests just yesterday. That's the highest amount in a single day since January and the fourth most since the start of the pandemic. Let's get out to News 4's Brian Thompson continuing our team coverage live from Freehold. Brian. Yeah, there is a modicum of good news here, and that is that there is no surge yet in hospitalizations, although those numbers have been going up, as has ICUs and also ventilators, of course. But clearly, this state is going through and suffering that same surge as we're seeing in New York. New Jersey, like New York, has seen a positive testing surge in just a matter of a couple of days. At the Freehold Family Health Center, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Terry Schlimbaum. On a micro level, everything has increased exponentially in every, every which way in the last two weeks. Millions and millions of vaccinations this past year are working, keeping people healthy, or if there's a breakthrough case, out of the hospital or funeral home. But the power of those first and second shots is wearing off, according to Hackensack Meridian Chief Medical Officer Dr. Daniel Varga in this Zoom interview this afternoon. We're not seeing any breakthrough in people who have recently been vaccinated. 
It's all happening in people greater than six months and, and a small percentage of folks in four to six month range. But with the Delta variant still raging and now the Omicron multiplying many times faster, there is little holiday cheer within the medical community. This graph shows how New Jersey is seeing almost record numbers of confirmed positive cases so close to what we saw last January. My biggest worry right now is the, is the next six weeks or so. We got another big holiday, you know, you know, coming up where people will be gathering, uh, gathering inside. I'm watching the numbers for various localities, counties, cities here in New Jersey. I can tell you here in Monmouth County, the number of confirmed positives in just the past week or so has gone up from about 200 a day to 300 a day. That's a 50 percent increase. The latest report we got from Essex County and the city of Newark, Newark cases have almost doubled in a matter of a couple of days. Live in Freehold, Brian Thompson, News 4 New York. All right, Brian, thank you. And also in New Jersey, Ramapo College has confirmed a COVID outbreak on campus. In a message to students, the school said three students tested positive this week. Their cases are linked to a social gathering from last weekend. Now, those patients are all isolating off campus. The college's tracing unit is notifying any close contacts. Now, out of an abundance of caution, the school has suspended all social events and will not allow any guests to visit campus. Ush. Natalie, in Connecticut, hospitals filling up quickly. Right now, more than 700 people are in hospitals across the state. About three quarters of those patients not fully vaccinated. But this is the highest that key indicator has been in Connecticut since February. News 4's Linda Baccaro is covering this for us. She's in Greenwich. Linda. And David, I'm in front of Greenwich Hospital, which is part of Yale New Haven Health, a system that's seeing COVID hospitalizations doubling. And there is growing concern throughout this holiday season. The number of COVID patients hospitalized across Connecticut is rising. And with the Omicron variant now spreading, the chief clinical officer at Yale New Haven Health believes hospitals will only get more crowded. We've seen now 211 cases in our hospital today with 52 of those in ICUs and 27 on ventilators. So a doubling in two weeks is concerning. This variant is highly infectious and it is moving rapidly throughout our state. The public health commissioner says the Delta variant is still the dominant strain among those in the hospital, but the push is on for more vaccinations and boosters as weapons against COVID. 90 to 75 percent of our patients are unvaccinated. So if we could get those folks vaccinated, if we could get the remaining people who have been holdouts vaccinated, that would substantially reduce the number of patients in our hospital. COVID testing can help as we prepare for holiday gatherings and travel. CVS tells us they're well stocked with home testing kits and that they continue to offer rapid COVID-19 testing at more than 4,800 CVS pharmacy locations. As for mask mandates, Connecticut's Governor Lamont says no need for now as long as businesses urge vaccination. I'm not mandating anything. I'm giving stores and restaurants and businesses one more tool they need to make their employees and their customers feel safe. Make the crowd somewhat smaller, do so, spread out, get some ventilation. If it's not too cold, open some windows even. Mostly everybody is vaccinated in our family. Um, we're about 15 to 20 people that gather. And we're everybody's going to be trying to take tests before just to make sure. Just to make sure. Now, keep in mind that the number of hospitalizations is about a quarter of the number back in April of 2020. But, of course, the key, the goal is to never reach those numbers again. Reporting live in Greenwich, Linda Beccaro, News 4, New York. Back to you. Linda, thank you. And we have this story breaking right now. A CDC advisory panel says it recommends adults get the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine if they're available instead of Johnson & Johnson. Now, this is because of the risk of a rare but potentially life-threatening blood clot linked to the J&J &J vaccine. The panel says it's got updated guidance on how large that risk is. At least 54 people in the U.S. have been hospitalized from those clots, mostly all of them women. Again, it's considered rare, and this does not prohibit use of the Johnson & Johnson shot. In fact, the CDC has to decide whether to accept this from the advisory panel. It generally does, but the panel is saying there are other options that might be a better choice.